just wanted to say a couple of things about Nick Spanos before he actually comes on. Is that um, when I got into the space back in the day and he was running the Bitcoin Center, he was actually quite quiet at the time. But inside there was this real strong energy that was all about uh, changing the world and bringing something new to the space. But he served another role which he may or may not recognize, but I'd like to acknowledge that he was kind of like, uh, like our leader, our fearless leader, because back then, right now, crypto space is all about like, oh, everybody and their mothers jumping in. But back then, we were actually worried that the feds would come in and line us up and shoot us in the back for challenging what they bring to the equation. So we, that was the time of anonymous emails and whatnot. And uh, what Nick did is he empowered all of us. He actually opened up the Bitcoin Center right at the heart of Wall Street and fearlessly left that charge. And we were kind of all aligned behind him, despite the fact that we were using anonymous emails at the time. So he had the courage and the fortitude which allowed the rest of the New York community and in turn around the world to feel more empowered in the space. So Nick has played a role that I think is far reaching in that arena, which uh, he's probably not recognized for, but um, I just wanted to bring that up. So without further ado, the one and only Nick Spanos. say, oh my God, it's down, Bitcoin's going to zero. Keep in mind that uh, a currency that's been around for 200 years compared to how long Bitcoin's been around, and it's at 3,000 comparatively to the dollar, so. Well, I think it's been around since uh, 1913. And it's not the dollar we're talking about. We're talking about the Federal Reserve note. That has nothing to do with, it's not the United States dollar. So if you guys think you're this competing with the US dollar, it's not because there is no US dollar. It's the Federal Reserve note. There's no gold behind it, of course. You know, do you know if there's any gold behind it? Who thinks? How much gold is behind it? Zero. Zero. What about Fort Knox? So, uh, what should I talk about? Why you feel Bitcoin is the future, despite all the competitors. All right, well, I'll tell you one thing. I know a lot of people here that want to try to get rich. Does this mic work? What does it sound like? Yeah, you know me? Everyone wants to get rich and all that stuff, but I don't see it that way. I never saw it that way. Uh, I came from a uh, my interest in Bitcoin was political. I, uh, I'm a libertarian. I used to be a Republican. I worked for Democrats. I worked for them all. I, I had a computer. I built a computer in 1978. The soldering iron, 
my clients, uh, my early clients were politicians that wanted the data and no one had a computer so I sold them labels. I would make the different categories, I'd give you Catholics, I'd give you women under 30, I charge a dollar each. The Catholics were like 18 cents each. And um, you'd use the label and send your mailing out to people. So I know a lot about these politicians because over and above that I've also worked on many campaigns. I wrote campaign management software that people use. Many of them used it before. And I got really jaded with the political uh, situation. I got out, I, I was in and out for a long time. Uh, I built a couple of internet properties there. Like the, I built uh, getaroom.com, no more hotels. That's like early precursor to a 1996 copy of uh, Airbnb. I built a livery cab before anyone had a smartphone. I was like an Uber. So, I've always been early, and in politics, uh, after you put someone in office, then every two years, if he's in Congress, every two years he has to raise money. So after he raises, you know, so the first time around he gets it from friends or family, but then, you know, he wants to stay in, so he's perpetually asking for money, and he's, uh, that's where the lobbyists come in, right? So the lobbyists have a pretty easy job, because all these guys need money all the time. So because they need money all the time, they'll probably sign anything. So they can stay in there and be the bell of the ball over in the Capitol and feel special and turn into assholes, even if they were nice people. Hey, hey, hey. So, just joking. So I got pretty jaded with the politics. I helped out uh, uh, Bush Cheney and uh, Miami Dade Brown in Palm Beach County in 2004. That was four years after the dangling Chad. And uh, I got out altogether after that. I was like, you know what? I'm done with all this. And then I heard uh, Ron Paul speak. And uh, I said, oh, I gotta help that guy because he was talking against the Federal Reserve. And uh, I really didn't have a distaste for the Federal Reserve because many years earlier, I was a big shot real estate guy. And uh, the stock market crashed in the 80s and then became a commercial fisherman. So I ended up hating the Federal Reserve for this because I, the, I saw on the news, they said, well, if Greenspan's briefcase was wider, there wouldn't be a, a crash. And uh, so I said to myself, well, that guy's my owner. I guess he's my owner because I used to be a big shot real estate mogul uh, at 23 and a half. I used to be a big shot real estate mogul, which I was. And uh, he just made me a fisherman because of the size of his briefcase. So I said, well, there's something wrong here. I don't have these fancy educations that everyone else has. I kind of got thrown out of every school I went to because I'm a wise guy. And uh, I said, that guy owns me. I'm a fisherman because some, I got to keep tone down. I can't curse him. So I got to act normal here. So that guy on TV, his briefcase is wider, now I'm a fisherman, people just know me from two blocks away, and my caliber of women went down. So I got a little angry, and uh, I came uh, into New York with my truck full of fish, like I always do, from out in the end, of, I grew up out in the end of Long Island, Mattatuck, and we fished out of Greenport, and I, uh, Somehow that night, my sister got me to go to a, a, a campaign a rally, and uh, I took a Clorox shower, and I, uh, I kind of took over the whole rally, and I, I went into politics more on the action side instead of just the data side, and everyone wanted me because I had all this data ability, right? So long story short, I spent my whole life, most of my life, pushing these candidates that, you know, one fell swoop, the media, who are the, the new political bosses, you know, they used to talk about the political bosses and before uh, big media came out, but the only uh, political bosses that really exist are the uh, mainstream media, 
like CNN, and Fox News. These guys are your mainstream media bosses because you're not allowed to spend more than, depending on the election, $2,800 supporting a candidate when uh, they could sit there and talk about that candidate all day and night, and that's millions and millions and millions of dollars per minute. And they can do it all they want. So what happens is these special interest characters end up running your life. You're sitting here trying to bamboozle a little corner that maybe you got some kind of chance if you kiss that lawyer's ass or that fucking regulator's ass and sit there and uh, uh, try to uh, whittle out an existence for yourself. And uh, someday, you know, if you try real hard, and uh, now we got this Bitcoin thing in the blockchain, someday you'll be able, if you can traverse the minefield that these characters put in place to keep themselves rich, traverse that minefield, you'll one day have a bunch of money. Right? Anyway, someday, if you can find a way around all the things, you're gonna make an STO, you're gonna make a token, you're gonna get a reg A, reg A, you're gonna get a reg A, you're gonna get a reg C, you're gonna, you're gonna give $280,000 to a law firm that's gonna bring in thousand dollar guys every few minutes because they don't even know what the hell you're talking about. I could do that. And uh, someday, if you can get past all these rules, you could be a human and have what's already available to you. I don't think that the earth is not a bountiful place. I think the world is a bountiful place. In the 50s, I say this all the time, in the 50s, one person worked, and someone else said, oh, that's sexist. And I said, one person worked. I don't know, maybe it was the woman that worked. <laughs> Who cares? One person worked in the 50s, and everyone, there was a two-car garage, and everyone was all howdy duty. And uh, what was that other one? My three sons or whatever. You know, everyone had everything. Now, everybody works and everyone's broke. Did the earth lose 90% of its food or something? I mean, I don't understand how that happened. I believe it's the manipulation of the money supply, which you're not allowed to know how much there is. They don't even give you that anymore. They used to tell you how much. Currency was out there, you don't even know that. So what I'm looking at, I'm looking at a bunch of people here in this room. They don't know, I know I'm a slave. You guys don't know it. You might think I'm crazy, but I got a pretty simple perspective on this. I have not been indoctrinated in all types of belief systems imposed upon me by a bunch of people who've been indoctrinated, indoctrinated by the people before them. If I break my ass day and night and someone says all those green pieces of paper I put under my bed, now all of a sudden they're worth half, but you don't even know how many they made. Who the hell, you're a slave. You're jumping through hoops for these green pieces of paper. So, I thought I threw my life away. You know, the last one was with, with Ron Paul. I uh, ran all his uh, phone banks, I uh, motivated the troops. I did it, I set up all his advance work. I, I, threw, I threw my life away for the Ron Paul campaign. I threw away a livery cab application, which is a now Uber, which I built out, but it was before, uh, only a few people had a smartphone in 07, 08, right? 07, and then uh, what happened was, I was very distressed. It was all over, we lost. I knew that I pushed the, helped push the ball towards liberty personal liberty, uh, closer to where we belong and deserve as human beings. I don't want to be a human doing, I want to be a human being. I want to relax. I want to lay by the river and have some grapes or something, the way the planet was designed. So I'm walking, I'm going to say, listen, I just threw my life away. I just spent the last 20 years trying to perpetuate uh, uh, politicians that would help our personal liberty and allow us to be who we are and who we can be, who we're designed to be, even if you don't believe in design. I think we're designed not to be working all day. And I thought I threw my life away and then what happened to me was, you know, I found Bitcoin. Found a white paper, 
showed up at the rallies, at the events, Ron Paul events, real early, because everyone wanted competing currency. Ron Paul preached about competing currencies. I know a lot of you guys might be have a thought that you had some kind of belief about Ron Paul because you've been bombarded with the news and you got, I don't know what you think about him, but you have no idea after all the dozens and dozens and dozens of politicians that I worked for, he's the only one that is an honest person out of all of them. And he's fighting for the right thing, so, I mean, he's retired now, but whatever. So what happened was, yeah, get out of here. You don't like Ron Paul, do So what happened was, he was speaking about competing currencies, and you know what? I found the, the white paper, and a lot of other Ron Paul people found it. I found the white paper, I found something. I said to myself, holy shit, after election day, they can't destroy this thing. I have a weapon, I finally have a weapon. I finally have a weapon against my owners. I have a weapon. Oh, it's a bad, you know, now I was thinking, oh, it's gone bad, it's going nothing, I can't make that thing. That's all bullshit. If you don't support Bitcoin, you're supporting your own slavery. That's the reality. Bitcoin, there's only 21 million of them. How many dollars are there? Give me an answer. There's not one person in the world that knows how many dollars there are. And it's not a public number, and even those people who might have known, I don't think they can even tell you, because they don't probably even know. And then the Federal Reserve cannot even be, or has never been audited. No one knows what they do. They probably have one little laptop in there. So the reality is, I found Bitcoin, and I had, I had like a religious experience. I said to myself, holy shit, I have, I have a spear against my owner, that, that prick with, with that, uh, his briefcase wasn't wide enough and made me a damn fisherman. I said, I have a, I have a tool, finally, something they can't destroy on election day to perpetuate my freedom, my personal freedom. Forget all that, my own freedom. You know, I've lived in this damn bitch my whole life. Other people dictating what I'm worth through their, like, well, who the hell, who, who, I don't know how to talk to you people. You know, probably a bunch of communists. <laughs> I don't know how, you know, this is my perspective, sorry. If I get arrested in one you know, of these universities, if I talk like this, probably. So, I don't know what to say. The reality is pretty simple. Bitcoin is the only thing that can set you free. You've been looking for something. We have the ability to fight centralization. I got this guy telling me, oh yeah, IBM. Where's this guy from that Microsoft? Where are you? There he is, right there. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> fuck Microsoft and fuck these big guys. Listen, it's all bullshit. We're here for decentralization. I'm not here to make anyone and to create silos of data for anybody. I'm not here to help anybody else except everyone to become themselves and protect themselves. Now you're talking about uh, a centralized, closed, private blocks. That's a fucking slow, real slow database. That's what a centralized, private blockchain is. It's a really slow thing. Without decentralization, there is no immutability. You can't have immutability without decentralization. Because what do you do? You have your servers over here. You don't like what's on them. You can throw them in a the dumpster. Yes or no? So stop your bullshit. Oh, we hashed it. Piss off. That's all bullshit. Every, there's a kid that has a damn Bitcoin mining machine. He had and a, a node. He got every, all the data right there. You can't hunt down on everyone who has the data that's on Bitcoin blockchain and turn it off. You can't turn it off. That's where immutability comes from. Immutability does not come from some database design. It comes from decentralization. And we've been uh, we've been run into the ground. Humanity has been run into the ground through centralization for the last 10,000 years. And we have a chance now, finally, in the last 10,000 years, we have now, this moment is the only moment we have. And you know what? The window's closing. The window's shutting because you got pricks like this guy right there. You don't work for them, Kevin. I, 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 I,
They got people like this guy, which I'm gonna wrestle you after. I was a wrestler too. And, you know, people are adopted in some retardation. They're trying to, they're, they saw the future. These big companies saw that they're gonna be the dinosaurs. That they are dinosaurs, the meteor hit, and their leaves are turning brown, so they're touting blockchain. Like, oh, blockchain this, and oh, blockchain that, and we're the big guys. You're not the big guys, you're done. No one's gonna go for any big guy once uh, uh, these dApps work in a decentralized fashion. Why would I give my data to fucking Zuckerberg? A little prick. Huh? Or Gates with his evil foundation. That's all bullshit. Centralization is evil. People are evil when they got all the power. All people. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, we had this moment. So whatever, I found the white paper, I read it over and over, I thought, holy shit, I got it. I got it, it's right here, it's right here. So at that time, that incredible real estate business, incredible, and the data business, I had all kinds of, I smashed, uh, uh, so whatever, I got the uh, Bitcoin, and then I saw in the news the same characters that were talking, crap about Ron Paul and talking crap about Bitcoin. Same ones. The same names, the same guys, same ones. Like, holy shit, is this a conspiracy? Am I going crazy? Am I right? So I broke all my furniture with my fists. And I opened, I went downtown, I found the biggest space, 100 feet from the New York Stock Exchange on the ground floor. I found the space and I opened my own stock exchange. I said, you know what, I'm gonna open my own. I don't know anything about stock exchange. I don't know anything about your regulators. I don't know about anything. As a matter of fact, I'm not qualified to do shit. I'm not qualified to talk here. I should be on some fishing boat. I don't know what I'm doing here. They would never let me. I mean, they let me in over here, New York Institute of Technology. They would never let me go to this one. I don't know what I'm doing here. I have no credentials whatsoever. But what I do have is this, the, the brain that tells me that before I die in this fucking cage, I want to run free. I want to be free before I die. And Bitcoin's the key. And if you don't see it, fuck them up. Questions? Well, social security number? All right, what's going on? Um, I agree with everything that you're saying. Uh, but? <laughs> but? Okay, so if, that future plot tonality. I don't get it. I, uh, who's a broker? Well, don't buy from Coinbase. Who is stupid? Let's get a wallet. If you think, if you think back to the technology when the internet was starting, right? It was very clunky. It was just some email, and that that technology evolved and got easier, got more user friendly, so that now you you don't have to know. You don't even when you're using TCP IP. You don't have to know how it works because the, the, the technology has, has grown on top of it. Bitcoin is still very young and it is still, some, in some cases, for a lot of people, hard to use, a little bit clunky. You gotta be careful you don't lose your key. But it will, it will evolve, it will get easier. It has to because the user interface will be what, you know, the, the, the ease of being able to get in and out of it will, will help 
It's fine. There's a lot of ways to own Bitcoin. You just uh, got, you don't even have Coinbase. So get a wallet, don't go to Coinbase, and buy it from like, uh, you know, local Bitcoins or something like that. You don't need Coinbase. Go to, you know, you don't need these places because Bitcoin can fly around all over the place. You know, a piece of paper could be in your brain, could be on a, a app, it could be in the coffers of Coinbase's uh, servers, right? So you don't need Coinbase. Next question. You know, once the, the legacy financial pricks showed up because they knew that they were going to be dinosaurs, they started grabbing things and manipulating them like the, the Wall Street. Is that what you're saying? Before that, then it wasn't like that. Well, you know, buyer beware, you know? Do your homework and uh, stay with the solid stuff, the blue chips, I don't know. Next. Come on, anybody, come on. How about you here? Uh, so when the Bitcoin Center got shut down, what specifically was it that was, I mean, was it your landlord? Was it regulate? Uh, wh who came no, to No, no, it wasn't shut down. What happened was they came out with a bit license, scared the shit out of everybody, and uh, people never didn't show up. Okay. So, it, it so business-wise, it, it petered out because uh, at that time, you know, we had the dull drums for a long time. We had Gox. We had Trem, we had uh, all this shit happened for like two years, you know, and then the pet license came out, and people were like, oh my God, I gotta have a license, and you know. So they thought, because of a central place, of course, that maybe they could have been spied on, or, I don't know, identified. Okay, so the, the, the 2014, the, the whole Gox BS and, and the bit license, and what was it? Everything, everything. 2015 was the bit license came out. Okay, in, yeah. Uh, like uh, August 2015, whatever. And uh, just because we had a couple of years of dull drums and the license on top, the license, you know, put the nail in the coffin. And the sure. people were frightened. Yes? Um, back to her question, what are your thoughts on decentralized exchanges? Well, of course, everything has to be decentralized. So, Every exchange, you know, smart contracts, you should be able just to trade, uh, you know, atomic swaps and stuff, right which is going to happen uh, very soon. And uh, this this re this guy, I don't know the case with uh, what the heck is it called, Ethan Delta. Yeah, but I think he did run it for a little while too. So it's not the guy, the coder, you know. And you never know what these people plead guilty to, or uh, it looks like they pleaded guilty to, or paid a fine for, right? There might be a lot of other things, and then they say, yeah, okay, I did this. You know, they pleaded. Or they, you know, they said, hey, you know what? We're just going to fine you the 250 for whatever. You know what I mean? And then they signal the world with these phony arrests or the phony pleas and phony this. And, phony. and uh, that's where people get these, uh, what are those, uh, the cases where you, um, landmark, not landmark, what are they called? Precedence, right? So precedence is set with uh, pleas. And people say, oh, I'll plead guilty to this and another, and then some other lawyer pulls out this crap, says, oh, uh, he pleaded, this is the case number. But they don't know that he did much, much more, and he pleaded to something much less with a higher fine. So then, uh, you know, the, the law gets screwed up that way, I believe. That's true. So I have a question, Nick, for you. Um, despite the fact that the financial markets, the way they're structured, people keep continuously around the world getting squeezed further and further and are still not uh, accepting decentralization in Bitcoin to the point that they should be considering vis-a-vis -vis how much they're getting screwed. Uh, what do you think the greatest impediment is to them? The other country, to who, to Bitcoin? Bitcoin to decentralization. I mean, uh, what's happened? What's transpired? Yeah, no, it's happened. done. They're no. done. It doesn't matter. It's happening. It's going to happen. I mean, you know, if you after you guys wake up in here and we wake up enough people, um, and we just opt to do what we do. I mean, people's world 
There's no, we don't really live in a three-dimensional world. You know, borders, three-dimensional borders and rules per three-dimensional border is a little strange when you get on the internet and you can do whatever the heck you want, you know? So, you know, and the younger generation is all about, you know, the smartphone and uh, the internet and, you know, what we're doing. So I believe that change is gonna happen. Uh, we have an incredible responsibility. Like I said, the last 10,000 years, decentralization has really impaired, I mean, centralization has really impaired the growth probably. Uh, this, some smart person somewhere was a genius kid, was taught that he's uh, nothing and a low class and this and that, and uh, he did not give the gifts to humanity that he could have. I think uh, we're gonna be accepting a lot more gifts as a human race. And uh, those gifts could be fueled by bringing in the three billion unbanked people with a stupid smartphone. You can bring in the three billion unbanked people and they can uh, add to, you know, figuring out how to cure diseases and stuff. And I think the world's gonna be a, an incredible place if we can keep it. If we can keep the decentralization, the key to decentralization that we've been offered, I think we can, uh, we can accomplish something. But uh, if you wanna go the centralization route, I mean, uh, China has the social credit, what the hell is that thing? The tokens, if you're a good citizen, you. Yeah, called? the facial recognition, that's crazy. The social reputation. Yeah, yeah, social reputation. Uh, totally. Credits. You know, you can't get on a plane because you jaywalked or something like that. So with face recognition, of course, and drones and all this stuff that's coming up the pike here, uh, if we don't use, you know, the blockchain to free us, uh, they're going to imprison us with it. And uh, it's all up to you, and it's going to happen. Yep. One so or two things are going to happen. You can walk through that door after we're done, and uh, you can think about what you're thinking about. And maybe in the back of your mind, you can keep the realization that, you know, something's going to happen. It's going to be either good or bad, and I believe the decentralization is going to be much better than the centralization, because I know that you can look at China right there. Look what they did. And look what they're doing. And we don't even know what happened. We don't know any of it. So these things will happen. I, uh, I hope and pray that we have the audacity uh, to stand tall as Bitcoiners, decentralized, permissionless blockchainers, and uh, fight the good fight give humanity a chance because uh, if you don't, I think we're going to go in a blender or something. It's up to you guys. It's not up to me. I mean, I'm trying to do my part, but I don't know if anyone's listening. You listening or something? <laughs> I think we're pretty screwed. If we don't fight, we're going to be pretty screwed. Uh, a couple uh, shysters. Shysters have been around since the beginning of time. You're gonna blame Bitcoin for shysters? <laughs> you're out of your mind, you're hallucinating. You gotta get like anti-psychotics or something. If you're gonna blame Bitcoin or cryptocurrency for shysters, that's ridiculous. These guys have been around a long time. They've been around from when was, like, people were selling feathers as currency or something. So we have this opportunity, the only opportunity, I think that we've ever had real opportunities since the last 10,000 years to free the individual once and for all, to go against centralization. And, uh, you know, the bad parts of human nature. And we can do it with smart contracts and uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, free humanity. You know, you have all these big pharmaceutical companies and uh, they, they have cures, but they sell you cures that kill you. That's because of centralization, you know? They sell you the cures that kill you, and uh, they don't let you buy the cures that like, let you live or illegal. So that comes from those lobbyists in the hallways that bribe the senator, because he has to run every two years. 
and uh, your life is based on that, that's the reality. Everything else is a little straight. I don't even understand, you know, people have chains on them, they're dragging them all over, I hear them. I hear them outside, I hear the chains, people are dragging, I see, that's what I see, maybe I'm crazy. I see them dragging them here, I just came back from Los Angeles, they're dragging them over there, I was in London, they're dragging them over there, people are going about their daily lives, and uh, the wheels are turning in the wrong place. We are the ones, we have to take back our autonomy uh, through decentralization, and that's it, this is the only time. Right now, all your ancestors brought you here. You got here because people had sex the last 10,000 years, and you're the end product. And what are you gonna do about it, you know? I mean, you're the end product, and uh, the people that are gonna come from you can thank you or curse you. And uh, you know, maybe you don't give a shit, but that's what it is. Yes, ma'am. See, but the, the thing is, what Nick is saying uh, is that instead of looking only at them, we have to introspect and look at ourselves. Because nobody can do to you what you don't allow them to do. So at the end of the day, instead of saying Pfizer or anybody, which I agree with you, but instead of looking at the uh, regula regulators or the Federal Reserve and everything, we collectively have made certain agreements with all of these institutions to utilize those pieces of paper with debt presidents and say, yeah, that's how we're gonna conduct uh, business. So all of these agreements that we've made and are basically just allowing all this to happen, nothing can happen without majority consent. And if the majority is gonna sleep, then the majority is suffering the consequences accordingly. So they have, the, the real wake up is when the sleeping giant wakes up. And the sleeping giant is all of us. There's never been a war that was uh, paid for by Bitcoin. All you tree huggers. The one and only Nick Spanos. <laughs>